I've never really forced myself to use the F keys. Oh. I don't know. I, I think it makes sense to some degree, but I don't think it's really necessary as well. It maybe makes you just a tiny little bit faster in some scenarios, but it's also something that you really have to force upon yourself. And do you really want to yeah, spend your time on learning how to group cameras? If you know how to do it, if you're doing it, congratulations. I think it's worth it. If you don't do it, I don't think you really have to force yeah. yourself to start using There's it. There's some really cool like tricks and things that you can do. For example, if uh, if you get dropped, uh, if you have y each of your bases on, say, F2 and F3, you yeah. can just box your workers, F3, click on a mineral patch, and your workers will, like, it's like instantly, they're, w they're moving to the mineral line in your, in your natural. So it's like they're going to go through whatever's in the way. Uh, so that's like one thing that people did a lot in, in Brood War and still do some in StarCraft II. Um, I've always wanted to use it for spreading creep, like move a creep tumor, save the screen position so I can come back to it later. But I found that just moving my mouse around, like the minimap or whatever, works just as well. Yeah, that's how I kind of feel. I don't know. It's something that I haven't really got my mind around yet. Uh, F1 and F2 in... Um, of course, my previous game is Warcraft 3, guys. If you did not know, I didn't really play Brood War all that much. The only games of Brood War I ever played were was, was <laughs> when I was already in Korea for Warcraft 3. Then I met Artosis and Tasteless, and they told me to pick Protoss. I hate them <laughs> for it. Because they said Protoss is very similar to Orc. Thank you, Artosis. Thank you, Tasteless. I wish I was Zerg. <laughs> 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 no, I'm a very happy Protoss brother, no worries, guys. Um, but yeah, so that's the only Brood War Pass I have. And in Warcraft 3, you actually use the F1 and F2 key uh, to select your heroes straight away. So I got used to that and yeah. never really implemented it in StarCraft 2. Makes some sense. Just one little bit on the F1 keys. I want to walk you through the macro process in Brood War. So say like you're, you're playing Protoss in Brood War and you've got 12 gates. Mm -hmm. and it's like mid to late game and you're macroing off those 12 gates. So what the way I would do it, and I don't know how other players would do it, but I would go to my base, F1, to go to my gateways. I would bind eight of my gateways, control one, to one through eight, click on each one, bind it. Then I would go to wherever I want to go on the map, uh, one left click, two left click, three left click, four left click, to set the rally point. Then I would go back, and I'd build all my zealots, all my dragons or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it was just like, man, macroing was so hard. Yeah, I know, it's, it's really hard. I've, se I've seen it with my own eyes, and I was amazed. I thought my game, Warcraft 3, was hard. And it was kind of hard. I mean, uh, it was very hard to... It was hard in a different way, though. Yeah, of course. But the macro part of Brood War was insane. Anyway, guys, welcome back to Game 2 of Dignitas Select against Slayer's Alicia, for the people who just tuned in. Alicia took uh, map number one on Taldor Remoto. Select is, of course, our Blue Terran, spawning at the right bottom side of Shakura's Plateau. And Slayer's Alicia is our Red Proto, spawning in the left bottom side. Yep. Playing his short stuff, which I think is a very cute username. Yeah, but they don't see it. They oh, they see, don't? They just see Alicia. That's too bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Short stuff, not fair. Alicia is called short stuff on this uh, on the account that he's playing on right now, and that's irrelevant because nobody knows but us. Well, they will see it if I put it on the Nexus. There you go. So now they know. Short stuff. There are always people wonder about like, oh, what account are they using? Alicia tried to get a probe uh, in the middle of the map. Ooh, select almost got it. So unfortunate for him. Select once more, drops those two additional Rexes, then follows it up with both refineries. So uh, similar to his build order as he. Uh, show to us on Taldry. Yep, basically this the exact same build. He's going to probably start a bunker with that next SCV just to make sure he's safe from any sort of gateway timing. Yeah, I kind of wonder if Alicia once more goes for that three or four gate pressure. Uh, normally when Protoss players try to hide a probe early on the map, that kind of gives it away. Uh, then again, I do not think on Taldry it was all that good. He didn't lose a lot and he did kill five SCVs, but I'm not sure if it was really worth it. Um, we shouldn't forget about the exchange, by the way, early on in Tall Dream, where I think Select could have picked off three sentries, yeah. and he only picked off two. And, and then he would have never had to have even dealt... Well, no. it, the pressure probably still would have come, but with one less sentry, it's a lot less effective. Nice bunker timing right there by Select. Uh, finishes up exactly when the stalker reaches the high ground. So right now, it's just macro mode for our Protoss. All the Chrono Boosts are going on the Nexus. We see he's already mm. up to 28. Select got a pretty cute scout off over here. He should be able to... Ah, no. Unfortunately, that's a V. Bad luck, Brian. Wow, that's a quick uh, Twilight console, Ben. Also a really quick eBay for select. Mm. So uh, if we're going to be seeing some sort of... It's also a very hidden Twilight console, so... Oh, I love what Select is doing right now, and he should be able to kill uh. this stalker. Yes, he does, and I call it at the final moment. Did you see that, Ben? How often don't you still see an idle unit standing over here, and then they walk out, and then they shoot it? The unit automatically walks mm -hmm. to the left side, and then you get an alert. If you're here, you see a minimap like bling, and you're like, oh, stalker, left. Select. Uh, on purpose, used the move command, pretty much surrounded the stalker, was not a full surround, then started shooting at it, and then took it off. Uh, I really love that. Small things, but also important. Yep. That early uh, Twilight Council did, in fact, Me. transition to an early Dark Shrine, so yep. we're going to be seeing some shenanigans out of Alicia here, and the question mm -hmm. for everybody is, will Select 
have detection down. Now, he's got the eBay done, so he can build turrets, but... Ooh, but we see hallucination being researched as well, and I love that. So what I think we are going to see, guys, is uh, Alicia walking. try to get a pylon over here, then warp in DTs over here, and then perhaps try to walk, uh, walk in one from the front as well. So just, of course, like going DTs can be very good, but it's much better when you can get your DTs in the main base of someone straight away. And this is going to be hard for Select to... Uh, yeah, to prepare for. Is he going to see this coming? I don't think so. Even if he scans, most likely he will scan around here. This is a normal time. So I don't think he's going to be able to spot the Twilight Console and the Dark Shrine. And once those ETs are in the main, they're going to buy you so much time. They're going to kill quite a few SCVs. At least six, seven, eight in my opinion. Maybe even uh, more. Do you and think that pylon's close enough to warp in on the high ground? Yes. You can warp in a DT over here. I mean, it's not going to be a big uh, four-gate warp in, but yeah. one DT at a time, Ben, does enough damage. And here comes that Phoenix, and that's exactly <sighs> what Alicia has in mind. Wow. Just enough room for two. Select and DTs in the NSL, man. It starts to hunt him. Yeah, and uh, how much energy does he have? Absolutely none. He just dropped mules. He's got 30 energy in his main base, none in his natural. And uh, he's going to take really, really substantial damage. The good news is that he can build turrets, even, and that's... Really, the uh, the lone saving grace he has going for him. He also able to raise those uh, those depots, making sure the DTs can't get down to the natural. But so much damage already being yeah. dealt. Cute micro by select. Not just uh, oh, that missile turret is actually going to fall straight away. I like that. That comes the first. Can will he be able to pick up this dark templar? No, he is not. One more dark templar is in the main base now as well. Starting working on these depots. I'm a little bit surprised. Just walk in here now. Yeah, seriously. Uh, perhaps missing an opportunity. He's not killed wow. nearly enough workers, in my opinion, to justify making as many DTs as he did. Mm, I don't. I think he did, but I think he could have pretty much straight out, uh, straight out won the game over here, Ben. But he's still far from done. Those DTs are still here. It's annoying for Select. He's going to need more missile turrets, and this is buying Alicia so incredibly much time. This is a ballsy opening, because if Select would have pushed out uh, early on, ooh, he's losing a Marauder, losing a Marine and not even getting this DT, Select is taking so much damage. Yep, DT gonna continue to poke around and be annoying. Don't wanna walk too close to that turret though. Alicia, as uh, Dark Templar are very fragile, they die incredibly fast. Just gonna keep hacking away at this uh, building barracks, forcing the cancel. So uh, as, it, uh, as it turns out, yeah, Alicia is gonna have done enough damage. He's up to 50 workers against 48. He's transitioning into, I don't know, a lot of sentries and zealots, and uh, he can even make DTs into Archons if he wants. 39 now. 41 SCVs right now, gets 50 probes. More importantly, he's going to have charge already. He's on double forge as well. 1-1 one, one is already finished up. Uh, he's starting, no, is that? Yeah, wow, well, he's starting 2-2 already. I actually thought that was plus 1. So he's starting with 2-2 already, and yeah, this is just really good for uh, Alicia. This is a really awesome opening. We saw Cruncher doing it in Thor the Remoter against Select. Uh, he did it with a warp prism, which is a bigger investment and also a little bit later, because this was pretty much as quick as uh, DTs could potentially arrive in your base when the produce is playing from and expand. And I like the way that how, how he executed it. I think he did it really well. Yeah, the hallucinate's a nice touch, granting that high ground vision, allowing that big warp in. Yeah, only when Select used his first scan and he didn't lose all the DTs, he should have straight away sent the DT back to the mineral line. There are always, as long as there's no real detection other than scans, you should always have a DT in the mineral line, certainly when you have two DTs in the main base. But other than that, it was really well played by uh, Alicia. Yeah, forcing a lot of turrets. There's three turrets up now. Uh, got all those worker kills, 12 worker kills in total, and now his army is just so big. Yeah, High Temp Temple Archives is ready as well, so as soon as these med effects are going to be in range, he will be able to feedback them, and he has quite a few charge loads, so I don't think Alicia is going to take any uh, damage here at all. No, feedbacks did never, they don't actually go down, charge lots will come in. Focusing the High Templar straight away, I like that, but these charge loads are already so scary, man. Well, it's still nice to kill those two uh, High Templar, and for, you know, for seven supply of Marines, I think two High Templar is well worth it. Through and economically, Select's actually in pretty good shape right now. Just stack wise, he's not doing very good. His third command center is about to finish up as well, so it's actually not all that bad. Just this time, Alicia has much better tech, and upgrade wise, it's a world of difference. Yeah, 2 2's finishing. Uh, Select. 1 0. Yeah, well, 1 1 just finished, so. Oh, sorry. That's a, that's a small benefit. His armory is also finishing up, so he will be able to start 2 2, but I mean, 3 3 will be done for Alicia. Uh, relatively shortly, I would I would wager he's probably going to start it immediately after 2-2 two two finishes up. And come on, Alicia, don't make me a liar. Well, 2-2 two is going to follow. <laughs> it's just it's just going to happen. It's just what Protoss does. Eventually, man. Uh, in the meantime, he's taking a third base and pushing out into the center of the map. There's that plus three attack upgrade starting up. So. 
Yeah, surprising that he starts to attack before armor, but I'm pretty sure he's going to uh, start armor as soon as he has enough gas as well. He's a little high on gas, he has a ton of zealots, that's about it. A lot of units are out of position right now. I love this from Select, he spotted that there were a few buildings that he could attack from the low ground, and since Alicia is defending with mostly charge loads, uh, he saw an opportunity there. Select has to be careful though. Select's army feels a little bit scrawny, Kev. Oh, hallucinated Colossus, interesting. And that's a very interesting move. Does the turret grant vision of it? It uh, does not grant vision, so he can't tell that they're hallucinations. Nice storm on the top of the ramp there, getting a handful of units. And also, wow, that second storm was great. Yeah. Uh, still, though, select holds just fine. Storm deals a lot of damage, but didn't actually really kill a lot of units. Yeah, and uh, and select loses some, some depots or maybe some bunkers, but uh, ultimately... Lives to fight another day. At least you're going to have to turn around and go home. But uh, in while this was happening, he was able to get that third base up. It's finishing up right now. Select also trying to land a third of his own. At least he's going to know about it, though. Select's being pretty annoying with this little drop over here. Dropping outside of the main, he's going to be able to pick up this pylon as well. But uh, Alicia has more than enough pylon. Alicia has quite a bit of money right now. 1,500 minerals, 350 gas. Uh, Select. Did spot the robotics facility right now. I'm not sure if we have a robotics bay already on the map. I don't think we do. Nope, no robo bay yet. No. Starting right now, as soon as you s as you mention it in the back of the main oh base. Oh man, <laughs> that the, the, the burrow circling of Protoss, not <laughs> bad. <laughs> Select uh, is just gonna run up here. Should be dropping a scan, and he does kills that dark templar. So. Yeah, upgrades are just uh, the biggest <laughs> worry right now. How pissed off are you if you're a DT and they're like, okay, your job, block expansions. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, what if he just lands, man? He can't see me after all. No, he can't. Well, <laughs> DT's risk. like Atlas, man. Just That's holds that command center on his shoulders. <laughs> That's a risk you don't want to take. Yep. Uh, Select is, uh, you know, with that third base up, he's going to continue to macro up. He's at 81 army supply against 100, so it's not terrible for Select. But I just feel like this yeah. army of Alicia is just brutal. He's getting the Warp Prism, and the Colossus switch is coming. We always talk about this. Uh, dealing with Templar, Charge Lots, and Colossus, is, it's like the, uh, the holy trifecta, and it's just almost impossible to deal with. Not optimal saturation from Alicia and his uh, natural expand. Actually, uh, quite a few workers short, but since he's mining off three bays after all, he does have a very good economy. Select is out mining him now, of course, because he saved up quite a bit of energy to drop all those mules. The big problem is Select has been on triple orbital for quite a while, so his uh, original two bases are going to mine out pretty quick, in my opinion, quicker than the ones of Alicia, despite uh, taking some economical damage early on from those DTs. The good thing is now he has Warp Prism and he still has that Dark Shrine, so he's always able to warp in DTs, and as we all know, DTs do more damage than pretty much everything else. Yep. And there that big warp in is, it's all Zealots this time. Uh, while that was happening... Ooh, Ghost Academy is going to take a lot of damage. He's researching personal cloaking, which is pretty important. Army also taking quite a bit of damage. There's a single DT in that mix. That's so cute. Uh, that way, once it gets cleaned up, uh, there's still something hacking away. Yeah, especially if Select doesn't quite notice it. At the same time, uh, Alicia had run a Zealot up into this wow. expand at the top of the map, but Select with good positioning Those on that DTs bunker. Those killed uh, kill Marines in one blow, despite 2-2 two, two upgrades. That's pretty sick. How much damage do, do DTs 60. do? 60. What? What? <laughs> That's more than a baneling. I know, but not more again than a baneling against the building. Not more than a baneling against the building. Uh, Select is still down 10 army supply, and if anything, if Select really wants to deal with his army, he's going to need a bigger army. Then again, if this game sort of stalls out and both players max out, Select can slowly but steady uh, cut workers or even like just start sacrificing no, workers. No, not the factory, Kev. Factory flies into cannons. I love this by here, Alicia, by the way. This is so smart. This helps you out so much against ghosts with personal cloaking. How often don't you see TVPs being decided by uh, a group of ghosts late yeah. game when there's no more observer, when the observer gets sniped? That's not something that's going to happen real quick when you have cannons like this. This is super, super important and still something we don't see often enough. It's like trying to get that Viking production going. He's got uh, two, two Vikings being produced at a time. But it's, it's still going to be really hard for him to hit that mass. Three Colossi on the field, only four, go or four Vikings out right now, the fifth and sixth in production. And Alicia pushing as if he wants to pick a fight somewhere. I really love how select his position his buildings up in this third base. He's got the bunker out in front. He's got a, a supply depot wall that will keep units from running up into his fourth. Just little things like that, I think, are, are mm. nice touches. Also the other way around, if he would wipe in from the high ground, that they can't run into the low ground. Mm -hmm. That is indeed pretty nice. Uh, he's going to try to force a fight. We have 35 charge holds, Ben. I think that's the biggest problem for Select right now. Once more, will he be able to deal with all those Zealots? Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Wow, those storms were so good. Select walking right through them. 
Uh, Colossi taking a lot of damage. Finally, the fight's really going to happen, uh, but not before those Colossi really take some heavy hits. But the Zealot's just crushing forward. Select backing up all the way to yeah. his natural. I do think Select will be able to take out that. That's a smart decision by Alicia right now to retreat. He doesn't have an Observer over here. Oh, oh and just like you said, ghosts. these poor ghosts. And if he would only be able to pick up those Colossus, that would have been a really big victory. Oh, actually, he has a lot of Sin Marauders. He's going to pick up one Colossus, then those Chartles turn around. But the other Colossus is still in a little bit of trouble as well. All those Metapacks are still alive with so much energy. Yeah, that was a, a good fight for Alicia, but at the end of the day, Select still even in supply. Well, I say that as Alicia warps in like 10 Zealots. Uh, makes the supplies 170 to about 150. And, uh, whew, that was... Uh, that was, a, that was a tough defense for Select, a scrappy defense, but he pulled it off. Alicia's about to come back for round two, though. Yeah, exactly. So he, Alicia still has a lot of units on the map, and his production is just off the charge. He has a lot of gates. Uh, he has 12 gates and double robo, so that's just scary. From any, any given moment, he can go all gateway, or he can go all colossus. Soon I would actually love to see him add three, four, five more gates. We do see two more gates in production, but I'd love to see a few more. Uh, that's exactly yeah. what he's going to do, because when you're a four base Protoss, yeah. right now he doesn't have to invest into Forges anymore, into any upgrades. He has all the upgrades. Then you really need to go up to at least right. 16, right. Uh, 16 to 20 yeah. gates. And as that money stacks up, he does continue adding those gateways. I'm sure that he'll add even more uh, if, if the game continues to progress. But this next push is looking like a really nasty one, Kev. He's got the Archons in the mix, four Colossi, High Templar for Storms, and of course so many charge lots, 30 charge lots on the map right now. We have eight goes though, and if the EMPs are really good, here come those Archons, just start EMPing Select. If you if the EMPs are really good, I think Select could put a possibly do this. Army supply, uh, well, 15 ahead for Protoss. Shouldn't be like this in this phase of the game, Ben. Uh, Select trying to fight from a good position. He's using those bunkers on that low ground. There's the EMPs going down. Pretty good EMPs on a lot of the Archons. And this does tor turn Wow, them. nice snipes as well by Select. That was really important. No more Storm right now. I actually think Select can crush his army of Alicia. Uh, he's going to push forward a yeah. little bit. There's not many Vikings, though. And here yeah. we go. One more big fight. Charge lots again. Pounding back the bio. Select microing as well as he possibly can. Yeah. The Vikings just just die. Just oh. immediately they die. All the Vikings died. All the ghosts died. And Alicia is whopping in so many reinforcements. I don't think he can deal with these Archons right now. The Archons are just such an excellent meat shield for yeah. those Colossus. Soaking up so very much damage. And the Colossi, of course, dealing so very much damage. Oh. The bio units of Select melt away. And Alicia takes that game and the series. And 150 bucks. And 150 bucks. And all the fame and the glory. Yeah, that final fight was really... S I mean, Select has been behind throughout the entire game. Ever since the DTRS, Select was a little bit behind. But I felt that final fight when he landed those EMPs, I thought if there's ever a moment you want to fight right now, you don't have to worry about Storm anymore. It has to be right now. Of course, he can know what we know. He doesn't know that there are no st High Templars left. He doesn't know there's no more Storm. But I think if he would have known, because Alicia really only got all his supply back when he warped in 10 additional cells, and that was the biggest problem. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I just felt that if he would EMP everything and then go in with a really beautiful concave, Terrence often do on Shakuras when it just like it's almost halfway across the screen. Then I think maybe he could have done that. Uh, yeah, let's, taken uh, that let's take another look at that fight and see how maybe Select could have done things a little bit better. Here we see Alicia just dancing around. The EMP is going off and he falls back. Lost all of the storm, but the Viking count so low, Kev. And, uh, and now, how do you fight this army? Yeah, no, I, I felt the Viking count was low as well. I just felt normally Select's uh, Terrans have more supply in this phase of the game. Select was just never really able to max out. He does have money, but it's hard. Alicia was putting yeah. him under so much pressure. Select's got money, but not that much money. And of course, Alicia was ultimately able to win that fight and, uh, and take the series. So well played by Alicia. Yes. Puts Alicia 2-2 uh, in the season right now, and I believe Select is 1-2. Let me just double check that, guys. Uh, yes, uh, Select was 1-1 one, one right now, so Select is 1-2. Alicia is 2-2 two, two in the league. Both guys still alive. There's still hope for, for each of them, so if you're a Select fan, please keep tuning in because he's got many, many more opportunities to do, ho do, do well here at yeah, the yeah. ASL. I think he's a little bit disappointed. Obviously, uh, when you lose, you're always disappointed, but I felt both games, there were definitely... Uh, things that Select could have done better, and mm -hmm. there were opportunities for Alicia looked really good in game two, though. Uh, I mean, the opening is a little bit risky. If Terran makes a small unorthodox bio push, or if they wait for the two mana vacs, you'll always, always be fine with these DTs, because they're going to buy you enough time. But if they would go for something different, just hit Stim alone, uh, don't wait for mana vacs, for instance, or just go when Stim is even just halfway done, just to poke in at the natural, see how much Protoss really has there. He would be in a lot of trouble with one gate, Twilight Council, Dark Shrine. But that didn't happen. Good use of the metagame by Alicia. And yeah. Pretty good series. He played great StarCraft. That game was brought to you by Azo Monitors, the monitors we use here at the NASL for all of our broadcasts and all of our gameplay. Uh, go check out 
azo.com pick up a monitor for yourself we're going to play a short commercial and then we'll be back with a lot more starcraft 2 and uh, maybe a little bit of a special guest appearance by a little uh, a little swedish guy mr anderson he's in the building he is don't go anywhere